Now we've graphed standard form and we've graphed slope intercept form and now we're going to graph lines that are going to be either vertical or horizontal. And they're going to be that way because all we're going to have is an X or a Y. And if you're only given an X or a Y, you only have two choices. It's either going to be horizontal or it's going to be vertical. So I've taught this about three different ways. And I've come to find one way is maybe a little bit easier to handle than other ways. So I'm just going to give you two nice, straight, and easy. On my first equation, it says X is equal to 2. All right, well, if X is equal to 2, here's the easy way to do it. We're going to go over on the x-axis to a 2. So I'm going to go travel on the x-axis to a 2. Now, if you want to draw the, the x line at the 2 mark, it has to physically cross over itself, the x-axis. So in this case, my line would be a vertical line at the 2 of the x-axis. So that is the graphing of x is equal to 2. Okay, let's try another one. If that's x equal 2, then the next one, x equal a negative 4. I'm going to go on the x-axis to a negative 4. And I'm going to make my dot, or my point. And now, it, the line has to physically cross over the x-axis to be an x-line. So I'm going to draw a vertical line at a negative 4. So you can see so far that if you're plotting, if you're graphing only x's, you're going to have a vertical line every single time. It must cross over the x-axis. So what do you think is going to happen when we do the next one, when we do the y? Well, let's find out. This one says go up or down, down. Go down the y-axis to a negative 3. I will go down the y-axis to a negative 3. One, two, three. <clears throat> and, and as with the x, the y has got to physically cross over itself. Well, if that's the case, it's going to have to go horizontally, isn't it? So there's a graphing of y equal a negative 3. Let's look at y equal 5. This time, we're going to go up the y-axis to 5. And for y, it has to cross over itself, right? So we're going to go marching right across and cut across the y line or y axis. That is the graph of y equal 5, OK? Now, let's look at some of these bottom ones. I started off real easy. Now I'm going to go just a little more exciting. On the first one here, we have x plus 4 equals 0. Now I want you to get back to the equations that we've done several modules before. Before we can graph x, we have to solve for x. And how do we solve for x? We isolate x. We move the numbers to the other side. So I'm going to have to tell the 4 to move to the other side so I can, in fact, solve for x, and then I can graph it. So 4 needs to leave, and I'm going to do it with a negative 4 clear and a negative 4. So x is now equal to a negative 4. Solve the equation first. If the numbers are on the same side, then you can graph it. So I'm going to go to x, the x-axis, to a negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And what am I going to do? I'm going to have to physically cross over the x-axis. So there is our vertical line where x is equal to a negative 4. Okay? Now let's look at this one right here. x minus 6 equal 2. Okay, here is x minus 6 is equal to 2. <clears throat> we can't graph that yet because x has not been isolated. So let's tell the, the negative 6 to move to the other side. We're going to do a plus 6 to clear and a plus 6. x is now equal to 8, and that's totally ready to graph. So I'm going to go on the x-axis to a positive 8. And it has to cross over itself. So here we go. Close enough. <clears throat> That's x is equal to 8. All right, let's look at the uh, y. 2y plus 6 equal 10. 
Start thinking about that. Now remember, all the x's were vertical, so you know y is going to be horizontal. Here we go. 2y plus 6 equal 10. Once again, we have got to move the 6 to the other side, and in addition to that, we've got 2y, and we don't graph for 2y. We graph for one positive y. So let's move the 6 to the other side first. <clears throat> Minus 6 to clear, negative 6. We now have 2y equal 4. Now you know what to do. We have 2y. We've got to divide both sides by 2, okay? Divide by 2, so y will be 2. Well, let's go up the y uh, axis, or the y line, 2a positive 2. And since a y line graphed properly has to cross over itself, we're going to have a nice horizontal line at a positive 2 on the y. Okay? Let's look at our next one. A negative 2x equal 4. Negative 2x equal 4. Now, the x is on the, on the side by himself, but the problem is we don't graph for a negative 2x. We graph for a single positive x. So you know we're going to have to divide both sides by negative 2. So negative into a negative is a positive x or positive 1x. And 4 divided by a negative 2 is a negative 2. So I'm going to have to go to a negative 2 on the x, 1, 2. And it has to physically cross over itself. So there is my vertical line at a negative 2 on the x-axis. And it looks to me like we've got a couple more over there. Let's try this one. A negative x equal 5. Now that looks real ready, doesn't it? I do have a single x, but look, he's a negative. Negative 1x. Remember, coefficient, negative 1 there. I'm going to have to divide by a negative 1. And when I divide both sides by a negative 1, I end up with a positive x, and a negative 1 into 5 is a negative 5. So I'm going to go on the x-axis to a negative 5. There's 2, 3, 4, 5. And because it has to physically cross over itself, there is my x at a negative 5. Okay, and I've got one more for you right there. Let's do 2x minus 4 is equal to 12. Now, two things you're going to have to do here. We're going to have to move the 4 to the other side. Then we're going to have to divide by the number of x's we have. So we can do that. All right, let's do a plus 4 to clear and a plus 4. I now have 2x is equal to 16, but I have to divide by 2. So when I divide both sides by 2, x will be equal to 8. I'll go over on the x-axis to 8, and it must physically cross over itself. So there is a graph of x equal 8, okay? Now there's one other thing I want to show you in this video, and that is this. I want to draw a line for you, several lines for you on my graph. And I want us to determine where that line crosses the x and the y-intercept and name that particular coordinate. Um, here we go. Let's give it a try. Let's say that I am going... Now, I want you to see where it crosses. I know that's not a good line. But see where it crosses the y and see where it crosses the x. Crosses right here and right here. Now, if you had to name the x and y intercept, what would be the name of that point? I need it in parentheses, x first, comma, y. How do I get to that point? Well, I started at 0 for x, and I went up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
So the y-intercept, the y-intercept is at 0 comma 8. Let's see where the x-intercept is. x-intercept, let's see, <clears throat> well we're going negative here, so we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's at a negative 8, and did it move up or down on the y? No, it did not. So it's a negative 8 comma 0. So sometimes I will show you a picture of a graph and ask you to find where it crosses on the x and the y intercept and then tell me the name of the ordered pair for that location. All right, let's try another. Okay, I'm going to draw something interesting here. Okay, now, this crosses at four different places. We have it crossing here, and here, here, and right there. So why don't we start with this one, see if we can name the coordinate location for that, uh, that point. Uh, let's see, let's move over one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a negative six, negative six, but it didn't go up the y any, so that point is a negative six and zero. Okay, let's take this one. We didn't go any place on the x, so we started at zero and went down one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's zero comma six. <clears throat> All right, let's take this one. We moved on the x, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We moved over eight, but we did not go up. So that location is eight comma zero. And the last one, it looks like we started at the origin and didn't move off the origin at all. So x is zero and y is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in this drawing, I crossed over the x or y axis four times, and these are the four ordered pairs for where they crossed. You can do that, can't you? Okay, I thought you could. Now let me draw another one for you. Let's say I have something like this. Hmm. And it looks like it crosses right there, and it crosses right here, and it looks like it's crossing right there as well. So we have three different locations that we need to know the ordered pair for. Let's start with this one. We're going to move over on the x. Let's see how many. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We did a negative 11, but we didn't go up the y. So that's a negative 11, 0. And on this one, we went positive x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We moved over 6, but we didn't go up. So 6 comma 0. And then let's see about this one. How did we get there? Well, let's see. It looks like we moved over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We went back negative six, and we went up a positive nine. So we identified where uh, the picture was crossing the x or y axis, and then we said, okay, what would be a point, uh, the coordinate point for those locations? So, so far in this lesson, you have graphed horizontal and vertical lines, and you have told me where the picture crosses the X or the Y. While we're at it, I got a little overly excited there. That's not the X or Y, but I did want to know where it was. Here is another one right here. So that one is crossing the Y at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7. Oh, wait a minute. Zero first, zero on the x, then up seven. So 
with the exception of this one, which is not on the X or Y intercept, but I wanted to know the location anyway. We have named all the points where the points are. Okay, good job.